The human population has rapidly declined and Flandor is the last city where humans live. It is formed of several glass dorms called candles where each candle represents a city block connected to other such blocks by glass tubes, while the outside of the city is filled with dangerous monsters called as lankanthropes. Hugh Favampir is a handsome man and a skilled soldier of the White Knight's Guild. He has entered the city of Flandor to complete his latest task. Hufa is hired as personal tutor and attendant of Melida Angel. She's a young girl who belongs to a noble family. Unlike other family members she doesn't own mana and is mocked for having no talent. Mana is a gifted power that lets a person gain unusual skills and increase his physical abilities. Melida's grandfather Lord Mordru suspects Melida is not the biological daughter of the family but a result of her deceased mother's affair with another man. The actual task given to Kufa is identifying if Melida has any chances of awakening her mana. Otherwise Kufa has to kill her. Unaware of this, Melida keeps training hard to prove herself and achieve her dream of becoming a part of the highest rank guild called Crest Legion. Just in a day Kufa has realized that what Lord Mordru suspected was true. But his heart melts for the little girl seeing her dedication and decides to take a huge risk of granting mana artificially. He asks Melida if she's willing to trust Kufa and risk her life in order to achieve mana. After getting a positive response, Kufa drinks a mysterious drug and kisses Melida. The drug causes a part of Kufa's samurai mana to transfer into Melida. However, it's less powerful than the paladin mana owned by the angel family but it's enough to prevent Melida from getting killed. The drug does not show after effects on Melida but Kufa suggests she keep it a secret till the school's tournament. The week passes swiftly and it's the battle day Melida was waiting for anxiously. She gets to fight against Nerva the girl who used to always make fun of Melida's inability. The match starts. Everyone is left in shock on seeing Melida using the mana. She even uses the techniques she only saw Kufa use during the training. She kept practicing them in secret. After winning the first match, she rushes to tell her father Felgus Angel whom she never gets to talk to. Though he gives a cold response, Kufa assures him that if Melida keeps working hard, she will soon make her place in the Angel family. On the bright side, Nerva has realized her mistake and apologizes to Melida for her abusive behavior. The struggle doesn't end here. Melida wants to keep increasing her strength like her cousin Elise who has become more skillful after getting Rose de Prickett as her trainer. Rose is the youngest member of Crest Legion who awakened her mana at a very young age despite being a part of a lower class family. After the tournament, Melida starts preparing for the upcoming Circlet Night Festival. Kufa seems clueless about such festivals as he lived in the low social living quarters in the Eternal Night. Melida excitedly tells him the details and shows him the costume all Academy students will wear. Melida has waited really long for this day to wear the same dress as her dear cousin Elise. However, Ellis is forced by her guardian to wear a different, more valuable dress. The guardian wants her to surpass Melida in every way and become the next heir of the family. Elise gets upset that she can't enjoy the festival fully and runs away to an isolated place. Melida follows her to console. Suddenly they are encountered by a strange man covered in bandages. He abducts both the girls and seals their mana. Williams is a half-lankanthrope from the Grimfist Guild that is instructed to do the risky experiment of transferring Elise's paladin mana into Melida. As Melida doesn't want to harm her cousin she resists the experiment. Though her mana is sealed, Kufa taught her to use the surrounding objects to the fullest for survival. After sneaking away from Williams, she uses a piece of flame bird cloth from Elise's dress and the fire igniting stone from the tiara to create a weapon. They have almost reached the exit but Williams catches them. Fortunately Kufa was informed by Melida's father about her disappearance and he has come with Rose to rescue Melida. Rose takes care of the rest of the Lankanthropes while Kufa follows Williams. He has already created a huge powerful Lankanthrope to fight. Williams cuts off his hand to seal away his mana but he is unaware of Kufa's real identity. Kufa is also a half Lankanthrope. He gets into his full vampire form and reattaches his hand. Vampire is the most powerful class of Lankanthropes. After killing the monster, he instructs William to pass his desired message to the client. Kufa has realized that Lord Mordru had sent Williams because he doubts Kufa. Therefore, he threatens Williams to lie to Lord Mordru that he has left Melida because he sends Paladin Mana in her. After solving this matter, they get back to enjoying the festival. Kufa promises Melida that he will always stay beside her and will make her able to become a high rank warrior. Meanwhile, Kufa's boss suspects him and sends Black Media to investigate. A few days pass peacefully. It's time for the next Luna Lumiere selection tournament a competition held between St. Friedswides Academy and St. Dotrich Girls Academy to get the title of Luna the most exemplary lady of the school. Each academy proposes two cadets for the tournament. Surprisingly both Melida and Ellis get chosen. 
In this competition, each cadet will compete in a group of three students and try to get the medals from rival groups. The one with the highest number of medals wins. The competition will be held in the Glassman Palace after a few days of training and all external connections will be cut off till the end of the tournament. The selection of both heirs of the Angel family is not a coincidence. The results were manipulated by Mrs. Othello the head maid of Ellis's family. When Kufer reveals the secret, Mrs. Othello confesses her mistake and says she wants to prove that Ellis is the deserving heir of the Angel family. Hearing this Melida makes a deal that if she wins against Ellis, Mrs. Othello will let Ellis form a unit with Melida. In the middle of the night, Ellis comes to meet Melida and tells her that she will lose intentionally so they can form a unit together. Ellis doesn't care about status, she just wants to be Melida's little sister. Meanwhile Kufa finds out about the Black Media arrival and asks her to stay back. However, she suspects Kufa and warns that she will kill Melida soon. Rose comes there too so Media has to rush away. She is from the class of clown who has the ability to copy skills of any class of lankanthropes, making her a dangerous opponent. Regardless of the danger Media can bring, the tournament continues. Melida trains hard with her teammates Nerva and Shenfa. The days pass quickly and it's time for the battle. Everyone is gathered at the palace while Kufa is patrolling outside and searching for Media. He finds a student from the St. Dottrich Academy sneaking out suspiciously. Kufa suspects her as Media in disguise but realizes his mistake when she introduces herself as Mule Lamor and shows her mana. However, she has also been doing some suspicious activities on her own. Meanwhile in the castle, Ellis is standing strong in her fight against Melida. She finally speaks out her heart and tells that she avoids fighting because she doesn't want to know that Melida is less powerful than her. Ellis never wanted to become number one. She wants to stand behind Melida and follow her. Hearing this Melida shows her full strength and promises Ellis that she will always be her big sister whom she can rely on. Suddenly Media enters from behind disguised as Nerva. Before she could harm Melida, Kufa takes her out and gives her a letter to pass on to their boss whom they call his father. The results are announced. This year the tournament was won by the cadet from St. Dottrich Academy. However Kufa is still wondering who helped Mrs. Othello in her task. As an after celebration the girls of both academies plan a party in the library. As it's hidden in the water stream, patrol ladies don't go there. On this occasion Melida gets a chance to develop a friendship with Mule and Salacha Shiksel. Mule tells them a creepy story of a witch that kills young girls to snatch their hearts. They all get more scared when the lights go off. A mysterious existence appears between them. It's the witch. Everyone runs to save their lives. Later it turns out that it was Rose and Kufa who scared them because the girls planned a secret party without permission from the academy. The following week, a training trip to Shangarda has been planned by the academy. It's Rose's hometown. Her adoptive father wants her to get married on the trip but she doesn't want to. Therefore she requests Kufa to act as her lover for a while. Rose always shows interest in Kufa but he usually avoids her but this time he agrees to help. However when he meets her father Blossom Prickett, he finds Kufa's face familiar to a dead person he met seven years ago. That person was a 12 years old boy who was the mastermind behind a huge killing in the town. Later in the assembly, a student falls unconscious and Blossom suspects Kufa. These events make Kufa uncomfortable and he isolates himself. Meanwhile Melida is hearing strange voices in her head. She hears them in Shangarda as well. When Blossom reveals some bizarre traditions of the town like publicly executing people with dangerous diseases, it makes Melida even more uneasy. Kufa has realized her suffering and takes her on a date to feel better. Melida reveals her wish of spending most of her time with Kufa and it makes him really happy. No one has ever said such sweet words to him before. Besides Rose, Blossom has adopted many other children as well. Sadly they all get killed mysteriously. As Kufa is missing, Blossom accuses him of the incident and orders his arrest. Melida is not ready to accept this all and decides to investigate herself. Media also offers her help because Kufa asked her to take care of Melida. Media is working like a normal instructor in the academy right now so Melida accepts her offer gladly. They look through the mystery spots together and find a dungeon hidden inside a house. Blossom must have declared it a dangerous spot because he doesn't want people to discover it. A huge number of corpses are lying over there including the person who was executed recently. Media guesses that these citizens were killed during the experiment of inserting a night gene factor in them, which can lead a person to get mana artificially by becoming a lycanthrope. Suddenly Melida hears voices again and rushes outside. Rose has been found brutally injured with Ellis beside her. Blossom and other townsmen still suspect Kufa and decide to use Melida as a hostage. Luckily, Shenfa informs Melida beforehand and she escapes. Afterwards she goes to search another mystery spot where she finds a hidden library. There she gets her hand on a research journal of Blossom which reveals all the insensitive experiments he performed. Suddenly she gets attacked by Rose who doesn't seem in her senses and radiates blue vampire mana. Kufa comes over too and gets into his complete vampire form. 
Melida is left in a deep shock seeing this all. Kufa tells her that he's going to erase all the memories she made with him as Kufa is afraid that Melida will hate him after knowing his identity as a vampire. Melida refuses and declares that she doesn't care if anyone trusts Kufa or not. She will always stay beside him no matter what. Hearing this Kufa feels satisfied and tells her what happened seven years ago. A powerful lankanthrope named Nakwa teamed up with Blossom and performed the night gene experiment on Kufa and Rose. The White Knights Guild came to kill the lankanthropes but Kufa asked for mercy by offering his lifelong service. Moreover he assured Rose won't thirst for blood like a vampire because he erased her memory. As they grew up like siblings, Kufa didn't want Rose to ever get harmed. After telling this all he requests Melida to interrupt Rose's wedding as it's just a plan of Nakwa to increase his army. Nakwa reveals his true form and tries to escape but Kufa succeeds in killing the monster with the help of Academy students. Rose has recovered her memory but Kufa can't take the risk of letting her lose control of her desire for human blood. Therefore, he seals her memories again. Before leaving the town, Kufa heals Blossom's wife for the sake of whom Blossom helped Nakwa. This act of kindness was a payoff for bringing up Kufa who was a helpless orphan child. The academic year is about to end but before that it's time for the annual Vibria Goat Librarian Certification Exam. Though it's not for first-year students, the headmaster suggests Melida and Ellis join in order to gain experience. Decides that another issue is arising for Melida, whom she assumed a friend was actually a spy. Mule had collected samples of Melida and Ellis's mana which revealed that Melida's mana is different from Paladin. She passes this information to Duke Serge Schicksel who decides to reveal the secret publicly. The next day, a masked man appears in the academy and claims to be Melida's father. Though he runs away, Kufa is afraid that the rumors about Melida's origin are rising again. He suggests Melida to prove her capability in the librarian certification exam. Vibria Goat is not some regular library. It is divided into different layers possessed by ghosts of previous employees. After students enter the library with their headmistress, Felgus comes to the academy and tells Kufa that his job is done here. Melida will no longer study in the academy after the previous incident. Kufa tries to convince him of Melida's potential. But Felgus has no intention of changing his decision. In between the discussion, they receive a letter from Grimfus Guild which hints that Melida is in danger. Meanwhile descending down the library, students face a sudden incident and Melida and Ellis drop on a layer alone. However they continue their research along with fighting the ghosts. But they get surprised to see Mule and Salacha there. Mule says that she wants to help Melida and Ellis in passing the exam and takes them to another layer. There they complete the task of arranging books and receive their reward. Salacha can't hold it in anymore and tells Melida that this exam is a trap to get proof of her actual mana. Mule snatches away the proof and runs away while the other three girls follow her. Meanwhile the other students and the headmistress reach a deeper layer where they get attacked by the disciples of Grimfus Guild. Fortunately Kufa makes it in time to save them. However his attacks are ineffective against ghosts. Williams joins in and defeats the ghosts. Despite him being a lankanthrope, Shenfa thanks him for helping them out. A few other intruders have also attacked the academy but Rose handles that efficiently. The White Knights Guild's boss Oyagi has come to meet Williams as he showed interest in joining the guild. Williams wants the research of turning lankanthropes back to humans in exchange for leaking criminals' information. Moreover Oyagi orders Kufa to investigate what Shixels are after and he needs to hurry as Melida is in danger. Mule transports Melida and other girls into an imaginary world representing a court. Serge Schicksel and other noble family members are also there. They all accuse Melida of not being the biological daughter of Felgus. Melida bravely talks in her favor and confesses that she has mana of samurai but she still has the skills and strength for being a member of the angel family. To test her, Serge orders Salacha to have a battle. Despite Salacha's original powerful mana, Melida succeeds in defeating her. The audience is convinced of Melida's capability but Serge hasn't given up yet. He sends another evil culprit. Melida and the girls help the audience to escape but get trapped themselves. Kufa comes to their rescue and joins hands with Melida to defeat the enemy together. All the students have safely made it back to the academy. The rumors about Melida are finally dying. The culprit behind the attack on Melida was a member of Crest Legion but he escaped before getting caught. Therefore the whole truth still remains in darkness. On the bright side, Frugal has finally accepted Melida as her daughter and believes that she got the samurai mana from her great-grandmother. Before leaving, Frugal hands over the responsibility of her daughter to Kufa. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.